All right, to my tin grill buddies, um, I noticed that my battery keeps dying quickly. And you see it's a 11 of 18, so it's like three years old. Uh, you know, cheap battery probably. But I'm just doing a quick current measurement uh, using just a regular multimeter. And you see I have about 570 milliamps. That's a huge number. The most you want to have is around 30 milliamps. Uh, to have a battery, you know, to keep it from going dead. And on something like this with no computer controls, really, you don't really want to have any draw at all. And so I'm cheating a little bit. I have some uh, specialty tools here and uh, I'm using a thermal imaging camera. And um, check this out. Watch this. What is that? Look at that hot spot. See if I get you a number there. Yeah, guess what that is? That is my choke. And I've been doing some wiring. I don't remember the choke being on all the time before. Uh, there was all kind of butt connectors that were not done correctly. And I did some rewiring. So I need to look at that. But check this out. Watch when I unplug it. There's other ways to find parasitic drains. Yeah, I'm cheating with the thermal camera. I just really narrowed it down real quick. Watch. Yeah, that's with the key off. So yeah, no wonder my battery's dying. All right, so follow up. Um, yeah, somebody has this wired all the time. All right, there's your choke wire. Red with a black going right to the main fusible link off the battery. That's hot all the time, and it's not fuse protected. There's another circuit too, not fuse protected. Going down underneath somewhere, I need to check that. And then, yeah, this guy put line lock on this thing, which I am taking off. I don't want to have line lock and do burnouts. Uh, but uh, that was fuse protected, but I cut that. So we'll probably use this. Got to find an ignition positive source for the choke heater, not battery positive. No wonder he kept the battery disconnected. Then he also told me this was his anti-theft device. You guys will like that. So the ground is actually red and the uh, power is black. And he did that um, because he thought that if someone tried to steal it, they would reverse polarity of the cables. Great thought, except... You know, that one doesn't reach the other side. And, you know, we're going to cook some things if we do that. Not too many things to cook on this, but... Yeah, God did a nice job on the truck, but uh, certainly did not know his wiring. So that's my problem. Right there. The other wire I mentioned not being fuse protected. Yeah, there's a heavy fusible link here, but that's not going to protect this smaller wire. This smaller wire would burn up first before that one. Anyway, um, the one going down underneath it comes this way, goes up to the top of the transmission, which I believe is going to be for my backup light switch. With the key off, I'm in reverse and my backup light indicator lights key off it should not be shouldn't be hot all the time either and i have no reverse lights so we got some other work to do need to rewire that so it's ignition positive and then figure out why i have no reverse lights but that is the other wire i definitely don't want to leave it in reverse with the key off, sometimes you do, depending on where you're parked, right? Gotta fix that too. Should not be battery positive. And again, even though those two wires, that one going to the choke, that one going to the backup lights, some would think, well, they're fuse protected because of this. Nope, way too heavy of a gauge, fusible link to protect that small gauge of a circuit. So, yeah, not good either. 
And while we're here, let's fix some other janky wiring too. The main ignition feed or battery feed that goes into the ignition switch right here had a smaller gauge wire going to that post. And anytime you have a smaller gauge wire, it's going to um, increase resistance, which equals heat. So I made a wire. I don't have any wire this thick, so I doubled up um, kind of a medium size and small gauge wire to equal the thickness of that one. And uh, we're going to install that. And I crimped and soldered that end. We want good connections. We got this real good uh, heat shrink adhesive lined stuff too. We'll seal that up. With one half. See this half. Just using a, a heat shrink crimp connector. Love these things. This is also adhesive lined. There we go, one fixed main feed. That should help carry that load, that extra wire. I know, ideally it would be nice to have the same gauge wire, but I just didn't have it, so. Uh, this is the one that was there. Let me take that off and show you. It's even a little bit smaller than the bigger wire that I put on. You can see what I mean though. If I compare it to that one. Camera doesn't do it justice. Smaller gauge wire, that's bad. Resistance equals heat. We don't want heat. And heat equals voltage drops. So then we have low voltage On all of the ignition circuits, everything. Little things are big things. All right, now let's find some ignition feeds for my choke and for my reverse lights. All right, so reverse light circuit. Remember the one goes down to a switch that I wanna rewire because it was hot all the time and uh, I had just wired the horns and I went through the circuit and I remember that the horns actually share a power feed. So this red black wire, follow that through the backup light switch on its way to the backup lights. And uh, you know, really sometimes dissecting these circuits can be difficult, but if you switch your colors and then follow each one and where they go, like the yellow wire, for example, goes, you know, through the backup light switch to the backup lights and you see the bulb has a ground. What does a bulb need to work? It needs a power and a ground. So what is this black circuit? Absolutely power feed. That means the switch controls a power to the brake lights. It's not ground side switch, it's power side switched. And it shares, this is actually how I figured out which circuit the horn was powered from uh, was really using that the reverse light bulb told me that so uh, The horn gets powered there. It jumps through this connector and you see that there is a light green and black This is under the hood and then a red black and the other side of the connector inside the car You see it goes up to a fuse too. that helps identification as well That's a power feed and then the other side of the horn since we're there. It's this blue. I have highlighted blue goes to your horn button directional switch hazard you know, combination up in the steering column. And what does that wire do? Well, it grounds the circuit. How do we know that? Well, common knowledge would tell you that, but also what does a horn need to work? It needs a power and a ground. So this bottom wire we said is power. What does that top wire have to be? Has to be a ground. 
just some diagram dissection. Very easy. So uh, let me show you where this wire is, where the uh, light green and black and red black come together in one pin on the main connector. And there it is right there. Light green and black, red black. And you see that goes down where the guy ran his own wire. Didn't need to do that. Let's see if that is indeed ignition positive. I already know it is because I was tracking down my horn circuit. Let's get my battery hooked up. I gotta say the power probe has been my best friend on this truck. Just having my own power and ground for the tool ensures every measurement that I take is I have a good connection because I'm right on the battery. We got nothing there right now. Let's turn the key on. Uh, I don't want to damage that. There you go. That's my circuit, 1194. That battery's a little weak. Turn the key off. Zero. Now let's track that wire underneath. You see his wire that he ran himself. He didn't need to. Here's your red black wire right here on a connector. It's not going anywhere. Let's check it. I have the key back on. There you go. 1196. That's my circuit. So no need to rewire something when you can do some simple voltage measurements. Understand a circuit design. Look at a wiring diagram. You know, get a little help from other people. Pay attention. Some basic equipment, don't need a power probe, really just a simple test light would have answered these questions too. That's gonna be my reverse light circuit. Gotta find out what I'm missing back there. But that solves one of my two extra wires. So I can absolutely get rid of this one completely, which we'll do. That's the one going down to the reverse lights. And then the choke, that's what's next. All right, the choke circuit's even easier. Uh, it goes, the red wire goes right to the F1. That's the fuel terminal in the alternator. That's gonna be ignition positive fed. Goes through a splice, a bunch of red wires. Goes to my electronic ignition control unit. Um, then goes to the, two of the wires to the ballast. Uh, one of them to the voltage regulator. And then uh, goes inside the cab and goes to the ignition switch, so that's telling me that is the supply out. I turn the key on, that red wire gets hot, comes this way, feeds everything out there, including the alternator, everything else. And then it also uh, splits inside the cab and powers up this fuse, which goes nowhere. There's mistakes in this diagram that I covered in another post, um, but it feeds that fuse and then feeds the transfer case light switch. But this is an easy one because, uh, check this out. There's your two red wires that go to your ballast resistor. So I can really, I could just tap in right there. And honestly, there's a red wire right here that's already a splice. So uh, this might be to like an EGR or something that I don't have, but that's gonna be my wire. That's gonna be hot with the key on. No reason to go battery positive all the time that's dumb i can even use uh his wire i suppose or i could maybe find the one in the harness it's probably what i should do rather than running a new wire let's just take a look real quick let's see what's over there a lot of the wires I, I will tape this up this will look better when i'm done um i had uh removed a bunch of his janky butt connectors and used the heat shrink uh, sealant ones and um, I 
that's the that's the red wire he ran for the choke there should be an extra wire here and that's your red wire that goes to the field circuit of the alternator and it should be in there Let's see if we have one breaking out here There's your voltage regulator red wire. All right, well, we can run and use his wire. I'll bet you there's one in here. If I look a little harder, if we use his wire, all I need to do is cut the end of this off, use one of those bullet type plugs and plug it right into that. In fact, we could probably do that for now while we um, maybe Dig through the harness a little bit more and, and find the actual red wire that goes over to the choke. fan of this connector either it's not weather tight oh it's the wrong size too i wanted to save the integrity of this because in case i need to use it for something else all right that works there we go ignition powered choke how hard was that not hard at all choke wire Key is off right now. Watch the tip. What's the voltage? Right? Zero volts. Let's turn the key on. Here we go. Choke, ignition fed. Oh, I just touched that on ground. Did I kill the fuse? No. Okay, good. Let's plug that back in. No wonder I was having choke issues. As soon as I plugged in the battery, that choke was hot. So sometimes I go in and I didn't have choke. I had trouble starting it when it was cold. You know, just some real basic wiring. We eliminated the reverse light circuit that I mentioned not being fuse protected too was bad. And so the choke circuit, we didn't have to worry about fuse protecting it because it's already fuse protected using the existing circuit it's supposed to be in. And this is gonna be temporary until I can locate the red wire over in that harness that adapts to the choke. But man, just some basic stuff, man. This stuff is not hard. And uh, let's do a final parasitic draw test. To make sure that's gone. Let's go turn the key off. Disconnect the negative. I know it's red. One test lead to the eyelet. One test lead to the post. What is going on here? We have a huge draw still. Why? My key was off. Did I just tap into? Nope. Still have 800 milliamps, and that's with the choke unplugged. So it's not the choke circuit. 
What did I leave on? What did I do? This is why you always check your work. Uh, let's see. Did I leave? Did I? Oh! Duh! <laughs> Interior lights. My door's open. Let's close that. That's better. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that, especially my power wagon groups that I'm part of. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be more than happy to help you with wiring on your trucks.